Yuffman's uh, nearly in Lancashire there extinct uh, when some areas of Cambria are being seen one nest there at the moment. Um, and then this year there's only been six successful nests carrying 18 chicks. There should be hundreds and hundreds of these birds nesting. Um, the reason why the, the, the hen harrow is hated by grouchings is so much is because there's a study um, called the Langley Wall Demonstration Project where they basically went out, they managed the warland without killing any birds of prey, as it should be, as the law says it is. Um, and basically they studied the results to see could the moorland be managed for grouse shooting with birds of prey present. Well, obviously when you've got two competition, competing species, you've got guns who want to shoot them and shoot as many, you've got the hen harrows who kind of naturally predate any of these species. It's two different species going through one species that is there and can only cope with one species predating it. The results are common sense. You can't have a grouse school and have hen harrows. So they're shot, they're poisoned. You see the rabbits are laced with poison left out. I will see their nests destroyed. And this is a frequent occurrence. We saw, for example, that the um, hen harrows were shot down uh, only two years ago on Yorkshire's moors. We see that hen harrows this year have been disappearing despite the satellite attack. And you can't simply watch a hen harrow. Their range is too big. They go from county to county. We see hen harrows, for example, that start off in Lancashire, going up as far as the highlands of Scotland, crossing many, many grouse holes. There's many opportunities for game keepers to shoot them down, to poison them, to trap them, and to kill them. So this is the result. Um, in the North Peak, the Peak District National Park, it was released in, uh, three weeks ago, that there's now only three breeding pairs of peregrine falcons left. We've seen that, for example, on National Trust land, we've seen prosecutions of gamekeepers for illegal trapping the peregrines. Um, we've seen reports of sh they've been shot down. And this is an area which is known as the sink for birds of prey, simply because they don't pass it alive. Um, you see, if you look at the prosecution rate, 75% of bird crime is committed by gamekeepers. 75% of prosecutions are of gamekeepers. It's not just a rumour that people are making up because they don't like gamekeepers. They don't like grouse shooting. The facts are there, the statistics are there. And there's a big problem. If you can imagine, these moors are the size of small cities, some of them, and they span across very, very remote areas that have limited access. You can't go up and put a CCTV camera on every corner. You can't go up and put a policeman on every corner. It's simply impossible to police on that, and the gatekeepers take the opportunistic moment to go out there and purge the moors of their wildlife. So what else? It's not just limited direct to that. These moorlands are industrially managed. You see the shooting industry, for example, they come out in the press, they come out recently and said, oh look, our birds are all fancy, they're running wild and free. It's better than your battery farm chicken. This is what they use to enable the public support. Well, that's not the case at all. In fact, I go as far as saying that ground shooting and the management is more damaging than factory farming. We see, for example, in order to boost the grouse numbers, we see that the moorlands are burned because the rotation increases heather, which is heather food for the grouse, more food, more grouse. We see that the moorlands are drained, so they literally dig and carve away the hillside to put new channels to get rid of all the water. Why? Because heather grows better in the drier habitat. Um, we're also seeing that this damages the blanket bog, which is rarer than the Amazon rainforest. We're seeing that the biodiversity is decreasing as a result of the number of different species up there, not just the trapping and the shooting and the snaring, but because simply it's so industrially managed they can't survive there. The insect numbers go down through the burning, that affects all the different species that eat off the insects. Uh, we also see the water and air quality. We see people around the towns at the bottom of the grouse school suffering things like asthma. You go up during the burning season, you can literally stand in the valley and see a fire here, a fire here, all around you, just the moors on fire, and all the local towns full of smog and stink as a result. Um, it also alters the hydrology of the land. So the hills um, around the moors and moorlands are they're a big store for water. In fact, they're probably the most important store for water you can get in the uplands and the valley areas of this country. We see that it increases flooding because it's simply the moors can't hold the water because they've been messed up so much. Uh, and the result of the grass is, if you imagine, you're putting 
too many births that shouldn't be there in that density in one area. They get disease, they get parasites, and they have to be medicated and dosed with grip. As a result, again, the grip, the number drives the face of these moors, and when it rains, the grip goes over and it kills an axis and insecticide all around. It's not just that, we've got the lead shots, there's been a big debate at the moment, the government are discussing banning lead shot, there was a big report released by Oxford University two weeks ago, showing that 100,000 birds in this country are being poisoned through the use of lead shot by shoots. It's simple, the lead is the ball bearings that go, and they shoot obviously through the cartridges. It goes into the soil all around, we see um, the game that might have a wing blasted off, um, the grass might have a wing blast off going along and not being picked up by the shoots afterwards. And the studies that say 20 to 30 percent of grass that are shot are not recovered. Um, and then we get species such as the red pikes who naturally eat carrion, they eat species that are either half dead or just lying there decomposing. They're eating it, and another study suggests that up to 30 percent of red kites around grass moors have got lead poisoning on set. Um, so this is slow poisoning um, on setting. We see the liver shutting down of these animals, the reproduction going down, um, and it's simply outrageous. We see, for example, we don't see lead paint anymore. You don't see lead water pipes anymore. So why should we see lead shots anymore when this is the effect? And there's a lot of pressure out there for this to be banned. Not just that. On the moors, we see that the shooters themselves say simply they're paying a lot of money, they don't want to get their feet wet. As basic as that, they carve up the hillside, destroy all the species, and build a road to go right through the middle of that and dig out channels for their shooting bats, simply so they don't have to get their feet wet. So what's going on? There's monumental pressure building for a battle of grouse shooting across the United Kingdom. Grouse shooting is a very limited blood sport. It doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. We see, for example, in the plains of Russia and Sweden, where the um, grouse and sister birds twice. We don't see grouse shooting there. Um, it's literally limited to the UK. So there's massive pressure on the UK government at the moment, growing debate about why we should be banning this. And in that debate comes awareness. The awareness of growing wildlife crime, for example, the intrinsic link. The gatekeepers are passing out maybe 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 traps across the moorland and they're expected to check everyone lawfully within a 24 hour period. Common sense says it's not going to happen. We've been out and put cameras on these traps, showing it's not happening. We've been out and, and photographed decaying animals caught in traps for days and days, often weeks, without being checked. Um, so it doesn't happen. We know that people go out there, we know that a lot of the public are on our side. We know that a lot of people around the grass moors and in the communities are very much on our side. They don't like wildlife crime, they don't like the grass shooters going gun ho so to speak, and breaking the law. And they go up and check on these things. Um, through that we've, received, we, we've resulted in a 75% reduction in the number of traps being put in the South Pennine Moors Special Protection Area in Yorkshire simply by going out and demonstrating to the police, to the local authorities, that this is illegal and it can't continue. There's also pressure on landowners growing. We see Bradford Council, for example, the last local authority in the country to allow grouse shooting on its land. We see the National Trust, which owns a lot of the mills around the Peak District. Members are saying, that, what the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be conserving these moors. You're supposed to be conserving these areas in the public interest, in the interest of conservation, and you're letting them be damaged. There's been prosecutions for bird of prey persecution on National Trust land. And there's a lot of internal pressure building up there. Um, as a result, we see the Peak District National Park Authority, as well as Sheffield City Council, banning ground shooting full stop on their public moors all around the Peak District which sends out a massive signal, it's not acceptable. We don't want grass shooting, we don't want moorland to be managed for a few gun ho idiots. We want it to be managed for wildlife and for people. So what are we doing? Um, some people might be familiar with the song on Ilky Moor Bar Tap. Um, what well, we're saying on Ilky Moor Bar that. It's the last public grass shoot in the country. It's the last one that's subsidised by taxpayers, and people don't want it. 
So what we achieved? Well, through our pressure of our campaign, we've achieved a complete ban on the trapping and snaring across the moor, across the public moorland. No more foxes being snared, no more um, crows being trapped and left there, um, simply through our pressure and lobbying. We've also seen the 75% reduction on the private moorland areas across the South Pennine Moor Special Protection Area. We've also seen burning now has been severely restricted. Um, to the sense that they cannot burn unless they can show that it's got a benefit. How you can show benefits to setting a moorland on fire, it's quite obvious that you can't. Uh, we've also been up there, we, uh, this is one of the protests, we've had over 60 people going up to kick off the ground shooting season, holding a protest walk and picnic. Um, as a result, we had people going up, setting up picnics and playing cricket in front of the shotguns so that they could not shoot. Uh, through that, since 2014, um, during last season, we actively stopped 14 ground shoots from taking place. Imagine, these shoots kill maybe 200, 300, 400 birds at a time per shoot. That's thousands of birds not shot by us simply going out there and blocking the guns and saying, no chance, we're not doing this. Uh, we're waiting for the figures for this season at the moment. Uh, we've done similar, we've had people going up from wildlife patrols up there walking, um, getting in the way of the guns, and the shoot from last year said, no, we're not going anywhere near what's up there. So it's been quite some effects in terror this year as well. Um, we've also reached over 7.5 million people across Western North Yorkshire. Before we started the campaign in mid-2014, nobody really learned to crash shooting because people saw it as a tradition, especially in, you imagine, these more so quite isolated villages where uh, people and beaters get recruited down the local pub, and it's been going on since the Victorian age. Uh, people don't really know it, so people don't go up and question the idea, they just see the burning and think, oh, it's, you know, it's just part of life. Um, so we've actually got people to question it, we've got people coming over to our support, we've built up a massive support base locally as well, saying that it's time for grass shooting to stop. And this is in the heart of what's known as the grass shooting mecca amongst the grass shooting fraternity, the area where everybody wants to shoot. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed listening to the talk and thank you everyone for coming along, it's really appreciated. Um, so let's go on to questions. Okay. <laughs> well, well done. Uh, thank you. Um, secondly, uh, what sort of um, 